1971-1974 Stratomatic Excel Carryover League Brought to you by the Shrimp Trawler Game 63 Yankees at Royals. Welcome back, baseball fans, to another opening day in the 1971-74 Carryover League. It's actually the last opening series. The last two teams remaining, they're in the American League. Teams who fell to the bottom of their divisions a year ago. Surprising teams, as we know that the Yankees and the Royals have quite a history against each other in the latter part of the 1970s, from 76 onward. But now, in this timeline, they uh, have disappointed a year ago. Uh, Yankees finished below even the Toronto Blue Jays. <clears throat> and the Kansas City Royals finished below the Milwaukee Brewers, or former Seattle Pilots. So both teams underachieved a year ago, but time heals all wounds, we like to say. And the Yankees and the Royals both feel they're going to go worst to first and come back strong. They like the improvements that each club has made. Start with the Yankees. They tout a very outstanding uh, pitching staff. The starting rotation of the bullpen is outstanding. I mean, it's right up there with Baltimore and uh, even Boston in, in the America League East. They still have Bobby Mercer as their team MVP. Roy White, Thurman Munson, Greg Nettles. Not many new hitters on that team. As for Kansas City, uh, it's the big year where George Brett finally got his ticket to the major leagues. They moved Paul Shaw out of the system and put Brett in at third base. Aside from that, they they got Paul Splitorf back from Toronto, who was uh, summoned there in the expansion draft, but the Kansas City traded back to get him back to uh, where he belongs. And they got Larry Gurth to put plug in the bullpen. So we got opening day. Yankees, Royals, good pitching matchup too. Outstanding matchup. Another show of aces, which is what opening day is about. The Yankees will send 16 game winner Mel Stottlemyre in 1971 to 287 ERA in 270 innings. One of Mel's best years. And probably the best year for Kansas City's number one guy, Roger Nelson. He eventually gets uh, sent to the Cincinnati Reds in the Hal McCray deal. But in 1972, 11-6 with a 208 ERA in 173 innings. That'll put him right at the top of this rotation for the Kansas City Royals. And I think historically you can kind of see how the Cincinnati Reds losing that World Series were probably thinking they were a Roger Nelson away from going back in 73. Didn't quite happen. Anyway, Yankees, Royals, opening day, game 63. Let's get started. Leading off is Roy White. 62 flies to left. Elliot Maddox, there's a new player. 35 is a walk. Ron Bloomberg, 1-8 is a fielder's choice to second. He is on at first with two outs. And here is Bobby Mercer. 43 flies to right X. Pat Kelly is a 4-E3 in right field. And that is going to be an RBI single. Actually, it won't be an RBI single. It'll be a single. Bloomberg will go to third. So you have runners in the corners as Kelly played that into a single. And it'll be Thurman Munson. 67 is a strikeout. Bottom of one, it'll be the Reverend Pat Kelly. 37's a walk. He's a beast stealer. Minus three armor months, and I'll stay put. Amos Otis. 38 is a 6 4 3 double play. That's a shame. Because here comes George Brett making his major league debut right here and now. We showed you Mike Schmidt's car, the first pick in the draft. Let's show you George Brett. Uh, it's really kind of funny how they compare. They both, Brett and Schmidt, hit 282 this year. And they're both defensively 2E26 at third base. And they both have the 5 7 10 template. The only huge, tremendous difference is that. Mike Schmidt's three years older and hit 36 home runs. So it's going to be a while before Brett develops the power. 
Um, but it will have a batting title pretty soon, a couple, a couple more years. So here is George Brett. One four, rolls the third. We go to the second. It'll be Greg Nettles. Two nine for Nettles. Let's take a look at the Greg Nettles card. My goodness. He was still an Indian in 1971, but we kind of accelerated things. Got Buddy Bell on the Indians and Greg Nettles to the Yankees much sooner than when it happened. So Greg Nettles, 2-9, one of the 28 home runs he hit that year. Solo shot, and the Yanks are on the board. Horace Clark, 38, rounds a short. Tom Hutton, 57, is a K. Gene Michael, 36, flies the center field. Bottom of the second for John Mayberry. 37 is a walk. Lou Pinella, 64, future Yankee, present Royal. 64 is a clean double to right field off the Stottlemyre card. Mayberry holds up a third. Second and third, nobody out. And it's easy Ed Kirkpatrick. 65 off of Stottlemyre, homer one to four, fly ball the rest. He'll have to settle for a sack fly. The game is tied at one. With the runner at second and one out. Bob Oliver, five tens a walk. Two on for Freddie High Tech Pie Tech. 67, single one 11, he misses it. And with two outs, Paul Popovich, two six pops out. And that's the end of the inning. Well, we got a one one tie. Both guys have sent nine guys to the plate. Roy White leads off in the third. 44, short X. This is Potek, a 2E27. And he makes the play. I'm wondering why Potek, you know, just didn't have the own base to lead off, in my opinion, with his card. I mean, he's a 2 267 hitter, doesn't draw a lot of walks. So I bat him down at the bottom of that lineup, but he's still dynamite defensively. We might move him up in the lineup at the top against lefties, we'll see. Elliot Maddox, 49, flies the center. And Ron Bloomberg, 5'11", pitcher X, Roger Nelson's an E8. And he makes the play, and Roger Nelson finally gets a three up and three down inning. Bottom of the three in Kansas City, Pat Kelly, 5'12's a walk. He's been on twice with walks. Amos Otis, 2'9", and Talana to short. And here's George Brett, this time with runner at first. 49, flies to right, and with two outs, John Mayberry, 55, is a strikeout. We go to the fourth, Bobby Mercer, 32, bounce to the catcher. Munson, 66, single one to 18 is a single. Greg Nettles homered earlier, 46 is a fly ball to center, and with two outs, Horace Clark, 57, that's going to be a strikeout. 1-1 one, one, to the bottom of the fourth we go. It'll be Lou Pinella leading off. 2-6 is a base hit for Lou. Ed Kirkpatrick. 37. Let's take a look at Ed Kirkpatrick's card of 1972. Everybody likes to have a left-handed catcher with power if you can find one, and they got one. Ed Kirkpatrick has a nice little tenure, and really, you could uh, let him... Bat versus lefties, and he did. He had 22% plate appearances against lefties, and he's about the same. Very symmetrical player. Power walks for a catcher, and this guy, this particular year, they gave him a minus two arm, which is pretty remarkable. Otherwise, most years he doesn't have that. 37 is double one, single dot dot. Runners with the corners, nobody out. They're going to play back hook for double play. Bob Oliver, 410, flies that in the center. And this is the new center fielder, Elliot Maddox, a 1E6 in center. So good, in fact, that they put, they had to push um, Bobby Mercer in the right field. We get a fly ball eight, which means that's no sack fly. Runner, ball was hit too shallow. If it comes up for Potek here. 2-5, short B, that guns him down at the plate. Now you got first and second with two outs for Paul Popovich. 1-8 rolls the second. Squandering opportunities are both squads. We go to the fifth. Tom Hutton. 4-10. Third X. Brett's a 2-E-26. And he makes the play. Gene Michael. 2-4. Ground ball to first. 
Roy White, 2-8, is a K. Let's go to the bottom of the fifth, but uh, here's a word from our sponsors. This is the Shrimp Trawler Video Channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Okay, bottom of the fifth. The Reverend Pat Kelly. 47 lines of the third. Amos Otis, 69. Second X. This is Horace Clark, a 3E16, but that'll be a base hit. Otis is a B stealer. Brett, do we try a little hit and run with Brett in his very young career? Why not? He doesn't have power yet. Not, and uh, probably not going to hit a homer in this situation. Let's do a little hit and run action with George Brett. See what happens. Hit and run, the B to the B means that is a advancing the runner. So he advances the runner to second with two outs for John Mayberry. 46, pops the second. 1-1. One, one. More pitching, folks. You've been getting it all spring out of these uh, opening day starters, of course. Elliot Maddox. 59, rolls to second. Ron Bloomberg, 44. Bouncer to short X. This is Patek, a two, makes the play. And Bobby Mercer, 47, is a pop to short. Roger Nelson's on point here. Solo homer by Nels is it. Bottom of the six, it'll be Lou Vanilla. Two six, and Sweet Lou has his third hit of the game. Ed Kirkpatrick. Sack fly and a single to this point. 111 is a 4 6 3 double play now. And Bob Oliver, 39 is a base hit. With two outs, it's Fred Potek. 2 6, Browns the third. Pretty even game here. 1 2 1. I think the Royals have put more runners on the bases. Uh, stranded more guys in the Yanks. That's about it. Stottlemyre and Nelson are both starter nines. Couldn't pitch into extras. So valuable to have that at the top of your rotation. Top of the seventh. Thurman Munson will lead it off. 48 flies the center. Greg Nettles, 311, strikes out. And with two outs, Horace Clark, 1-5, ball four. Beast Stealer, minus two arm. Did we try a stolen base on one one game? Why not? And that's why, because you roll 20 and you are dead meat. Tagged out before we even started to slide. Horrible jump by Horace Clark. Stretch time here in Kansas City of a 1-1 nail biter. And we have been enjoying listening to Best of Rock compilation of 72. Uh, had Ziggy Stardust, this is Elton doing Rocket Man, of course, and uh, yeah. Bunch of cool little playlists. We picked the year 72 in the middle of the timeline. And uh, let's see what the next one, Suffragette City is the next one coming up, if you're wondering. There you go. All right, bottom of the seventh. Mel Stoudemire will continue. It'll be Paul Popovich. 35. It's a base hit. East Steelers isn't going anywhere. Pat Kelly. 37 is a walk, and the Royals got something going. Two on, nobody out. Amos Otis, gosh, I don't really want him to bunt for Pete's sakes. He's like one of the stars of the team. So he's going to swing away here. 2-2, two, two, pops the third. Well, that didn't work. George Brett, we know he's going to swing away. 56, second X. And this is Horace Clark, a 3-16 e second baseman. And that is a single dot to load him. Bases are loaded, one out. They're going to bring it up for John Mayberry. 312 is ball for the dreaded bases loaded walk for Mel Stottlemyre, and the Royals take a 2 1 lead. Still loaded for Sweet Lou Pinella, who's 3 for 3. They're going to keep the infield up, try and keep it a one run game. Pinella, 2 6. It is the day of Sweet Lou. Yankees are taking notice of what this young Royals outfielder is doing to him and saying, man, we got to get this Lou Pinella guy in pinstripes. He's killing us. 2-6 is single dot dot, two runs single, and now suddenly it becomes a 4-1 game with runs in the corners and one out. Probably let Mel in there a little bit too long. Yankees got a fantastic bullpen. We thought he could pitch his way out, but it's not the case. And now... Um, oh boy, gosh. 
I mean, the Yankees have a fantastic bullpen, but I mean, you got Stottlemyre as a fantastic starter, but he just doesn't happen today. We're going to pull him after six and a third. And uh, we're going to go with Mike Kekich. Uh, he was in the rotation, but they drafted Doc Medich that kicked Kekich into the pen. And here, we'll see how he can do getting a left-hander out. So it'll be Ed Kirkpatrick with runners in the corners and filled up. Here's the pitch. MK to EK. 56 is a strikeout. And with two outs, it's Bob Oliver. 66 off the Kekich card. Oh, boy. Double one of 13. That is an RBI single. And the Royals take a 5-1 lead. That didn't work. Fred Patek. 68 off Kekic is a walk, and here it comes, folks. Popovich. We got the bases loaded and two outs, and Paul Popovich. 38 is a fly ball to center. But the Royals come through big in the seventh inning with four runs. As Stoudemire was pulled, his relief helped. It helped. Him. Probably why he was reluctant to pull him in the first place. And Roger Nelson has a four-run lead with six outs to get. The Royal bullpen is not particularly good. Doug Bird's a decent closer, but Rich Hinton, Horatio Pien is a decent setup guy. Larry Gurr, those two lefties are really a lot to be desired. However, the good news is they can all field. They're all E0 pitchers. You don't see that very often. The entire bullpen, all E0 pitchers. Let's go to the eighth. Top of. Tom Hutton will lead off for the Yankees. 37 is a fly ball to right. Stick Michael. 38 rounds a short. And Roy White. 1 8 is a walk. Elliot Maddox. 2 6. Single dot dot. And here come the Yanks. They got runners in the corners and two outs. It'll be Ron Bloomberg. 38 for Bloomberg is a single dot dot. And the Yankees are got it going. 5 to 2. And they can bring the tie run to the plate suddenly. It is Bobby Mercer as the tie run. Let's get Mr. Nelson out of there after seven and two-thirds. Very interesting game where both pitchers kind of wore out in the seventh and eighth innings. Wore themselves down after the brilliant starts. We got runners on the corners in a 5-2 game, and Bobby Mercer actually hits more homers off of left-handed pitching than right-handed pitching. However, are we going to ask Doug Bird to get a four-out save? I think we are. We're going to go right to the closer here. Doug Bird. 1973 Doug Bird at a 299 ERA in 102 innings. He is the royal closer. They're going to ask Doug to get four outs and get a save in a 5-2 game. Doug Bird against Bobby Mercer with runners on the corners and two outs. And here is the pitch. 2-11 off, off the Mercer card is a ground ball to first. Well, 5-2, bottom of the eighth. Kekich. Pat Kelly is the leadoff hitter. He actually can get on versus lefties, so he will uh, swing away. 6-12, flies the center. He will leave, and Al Cowens will come in defensively for him to play right field. Amos Otis is up, and he destroys lefties, so that'll be it for Kekic. We'll go to Lindy McDaniel in the eighth with one out. Lindy McDaniel, 1973, 12-6 and in 160 innings, a relief for... You don't see this every day, folks. A relief for starter eight? That is nuts. 12-6 and six with a 281 ERA. And he will face Amos Otis with one out. Pitch to Amos. 69, second X. This is Horace Clark, a 3 16. Another base hit off Horace Clark. Not having the best day in the field. Now you got George Brett. 2 5 for Brett, and is that his? No, he got a single last inning. I missed his first major league hit. Damn. Well, that's his second major league hit. 2 5 is a single to center field. Otis, 17 runner with one out. But you got the minus three on Maddox. He'll stay at second. Two on, one out. John Mayberry. 
Two five is a single to center field, and Lundy McDaniel has been poo poo here in the eighth after Kekic was a poo poo, and yeah, Stottlemyre before him. The Royals just cannot figure out how to get an out anymore. It is bases loaded, one out. Lou Pinella, he is looking for his fifth hit against his future team, the New York Yankees, with the bases loaded, one out. The pitch to Lou Pinella. 68 off McDaniel is a walk. They're too scared to pitch to him, folks. All those pitches were out of the strike zone. Way out of the strike zone. It's an intentional walk. That's an RBI intentional walk, folks. And it is 6-2. to two, With the bases still loaded with one out. And Ed Kirkpatrick at the plate. 65 off Lindy McDaniel. Triple 1-2. Double is a double to center field. Panella will not challenge the arm. That's a two-run double, and these Kansas City Royals have got it cranked up today in the latter innings. My goodness. I've only made four outs in the last 16 trips to the plate. My goodness. Runners at second and third, still with one out in an 8-2 game. That'll be Bob Oliver. 69, second X. And finally, a play is made. A ground out. Runner moves up, runner scores. McDaniel gets an out, his first out, so now he has an ERA. It was infinity prior to that. And with two outs and a runner at third, it'll be Freddie Patek. 37, base hit and an RBI for Fred Patek. It is 10 2 now. And Popovich. 45, skies the center field. Well, we did not think the Yankee team pitching staff. <laughs> Would get lit up like a Christmas tree on opening day, particularly just in the last couple innings, with no home runs there, just hits and singles and walks and one double. What a mess. And Doug Burr with a 10-2 lead will come in, continue to get a save <laughs> in the ninth inning as he faced the uh, tie run in the eighth. So here we go. It'll be Munson. 69 center. Greg Nettles, 110, flies to right. And Horace Clark, 112. Rolls the third. That was pretty easy. For your Kansas City Royals and your home team. Big win on opening day against the big bad New York Yankees. Well, they're not really the big bad New York Yankees. They don't have much of a... You know, in this era, I mean, it's been so long since they won a World Series. You know, Mantle's been gone for quite some time now. And, you know... Yeah, they're renovating the stadium and and all that. And, I mean, they actually went out and got Bobby Bonds for Pete Six to try and put fans in the seats, and that didn't work out either for the Yankees. Doesn't really get going until 1976 for them, and today's another example of possibly why. So, Kansas City, a 10-2 dumping on the New York Yankees on opening day. Let's do the box here. Uh, Doug Bird, yes, he does get a save, believe it or not. Um, got all four of his men out. So Roger Nelson gets the win, seven and two thirds, five hits, two runs. They were earned, walk three, struck out five. Nice, easy box score. Now the Yankees, oh boy, this is a total mess. So McDaniel came on to face Amos Otis. Faced all these guys. So he gave up one, two, three, four, five hits, five runs and a walk. That's gonna hurt his Roll Aids Relief Man of the Year award chances significantly. Uh, Kekich <laughs> got the last out of the seventh and the first out of the eighth and not much else. Uh, EK, he faced um, Ed Kirkpatrick here. Oh boy. He gave up a hit, a walk, and a K. Hit a walk and a K for Kekich. Unfortunately, all those runs are charged to Mel Stoudemire, even though uh, he was pulled. And the old inherited runners, yeah, that kind of stunk. So five runs charged to Stoudemire in that. Boy, four there and then one in the second. All earned, six walks, and a strikeout. Not a good day for your New York Yankee pitching staff. 1019-0108. 10 10, 15, 2, 5, 3, 5, 8, 2, 8, 2, 3, 5. Game 63 is in the books. The New York Yankees, Kansas City Royals. 
And I have said in previous years on this channel, if you've been following, just because the Royals really got out over their skis in the past couple seasons, not last year, the year before that, I said, you know what, I think the Royals can contend for a World Series before George Brett arrives. Well, it didn't exactly happen because George Brett's here and they have no hardware to show for it. But I said, they, they put this self, you know, for an expansion team, they built this team perfectly. They got Mayberry, Cookie Rojas, and they got uh, Patek and Brett and Otis. And they got, a, you know, a bunch of good right-handed pitchers. Heedlin, Patton, Roger Nelson. They have been the best of all the 1969 expansions, which would include the Seattle Pilots, Montreal Expos, and San Diego Padres. And the Royals really got up to speed much quicker than those other teams. Today it showed. 63 games through the season to this point. A 255 league batting average, a 322 on base, a 332 ERA, and a 138 whip. Through 63 baseball games, in Game 2 in Kansas City, Marty Patton will make his Royals debut. Uh, if, when the series goes to New York, we'll see Paul Splitorf and Mike Heedlin for the Royals. And for your Yankees, it'll be Mike... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mike Hackage. It'll be Fritz Peterson, the lefty, in Game 2. Doc Menich in Game 3. And Jim McAndrew signed away from the Mets in Game 4 if necessary. That's it for now. We'll give you the results at the end of the video of who wins the series. Thanks for checking this out, folks. We'll see you next time. All right, baseball fans, here's the box score of game one for the Royals. Take the Yankees apart, 10 to two. Very an interesting series. Um, game number two, uh, can the Yankees even this thing up? And the answer is yes, they can. As Fritz Peterson versus Marty Patton, um, the Yankees get to Marty early. A couple RBI singles, a two run homer by Roy White. It's four nothing. Solo homer by Dwayne Josephson of the Royals is the only Royal one run. That is it. 4 1's the final. Sparky Lyle comes on in and get, gets the save for the Yankees, his first save of the year. And we'll go to Yankee sta Stadium for games three and four. Game number three. Yankees again. Another well, well I can't say well played game. It's competitive and close, but. Seen a lot of errors this year, which is very strange. But uh, top, bottom of the first, two base error on Amos Otis. Uh, sack fly, it's one zip. Solo homer by John Mayberry, one one. Bottom of the fifth, an error by Paul Splitorf, and then a two base error by Lou Pinella. An RBI single, it is three to one. Splitorf's line, seven innings, six hits, four runs, none were earned. And that's the story of the game. Um, it's a 4-2 final. Doc Medich gets his rookie debut, his major league debut. Six and a third, seven hits, two runs, one was earned. Mike Kekich and Sparky Lyle finish this one out. And the Yankees have won two straight and have taken two out of three. But we have in game four the perfect scenario where home and away wins for both teams. As the Royals come into Yankee Stadium in Game 4 behind Mike Heedland, and they defeat Jim McAndrew by a score of 6-3. to three. Last three games have been very much more competitive than the game you saw. Heedland, 6-3 in innings, 6 hits. McAndrew, 6-3, and a third, 6 hits. Both guys kind of run out of gas in the 7th at the same time. You had a Mayberry 2-run homer. You had a Ron Bloomberg solo homer. You had a solo homer by Bob Oliver. And a... Error, another error by Gene Alley, making it four to one. Yankees get a homer by Nettles, RBI single by Gene Michael, it's four to three. But the Royals tackle and runs in the eighth and ninth inning, RBI single by Bob Oliver, solo homer by Freddie Patek, and Doug Bird gets a save in the bottom of the ninth. So Doug Bird and Sparky Lyle. <laughs> have two saves apiece in the four games. They, they, they've saved everything, both closers. A good start for the Yankee and Royal closers. So after a very intriguing series, what happens in game five? You're probably wondering. Uh, it wasn't very exciting at all. Actually it was, but uh, it was an 11 to seven final 
Mel Stoudemire versus Marty Patton, and poor Marty Patton is struggling this year. Big fourth inning for the Yankees, where they got the batting average, the batting order uh, juggled a little bit. They they moved Horace Clark up. They put Elliot Maddox in the middle. They put Thurman Munson at the bottom. He's better against lefties and righties. And so you get a single, single, walk, single, and yeah, Tom Hutton hits a grand slam off of Marty Patton. Five zip. Bottom uh, Two more runs in the top half of the sixth. It's seven zip. Uh, bottom of the sixth, another error by Gene Michael. A, a double off sack fly. Big eighth inning. Uh, two run triple by Bobby Mercer. And then a real sloppy bottom of the ninth in an 11 1 game. Another Gene Michael error and a bunch of unearned runs in the bottom of the ninth off of Mike Kekich. Just a sl real sloppy affair. There's too many errors in this series. It's very disappointing. The scores seemed reasonable, but the errors were unacceptable. And so it is the Yankees, winners of games two, three, and five, that win this series three games to two, coming back after losing on opening day. The New York Yankees win the series three to two. That's it tonight. We'll see you next time.